What's going on guys? Today we're gonna, today's discussion is gonna be about the rise of the demo people. And the demo people are statistically way worth, worse than the worthless people. Let me tell you guys a story. Years and years ago, I used to be in the military. I was stationed at Schofield Barracks 25th Infantry Division in Hawaii. And one day I was in the PX, and if you don't know anything about the military, the PX is an online store, not an online store, an on-base store where you can go get stuff. And I was in the electronics section and I saw this amazing Sansui stereo. It had a mixer, equalizer, it did all kinds of stuff. It was, it was top of the line and I bought it. And that Sansui stereo went from Hawaii to um, Fort McPherson to, it, it, it literally traveled around the world. I took it to Japan, I took it to Korea, and it was in perfect working order. Then I didn't realize until it was too late, but I used to be married to a demo person and I got my first sign. I allowed her to borrow this stereo, right? And within two weeks, it was messed up. Two weeks. Once again, the same stereo that went from Hawaii to Japan to the Korea, traveled literally around the world. Not an issue. Two weeks, it was messed up. Remember that. And when you're dealing with demo people, their natural propensity is chaos and destruction. Later on, after I got divorced and I was able to look back at some stuff, I was like, oh my God. Because one of the things with dealing with demo people, and demo people cannot stand to see something organized in good work, they, they just can't. They will have to mess it up. They will have to mess it up. And once again, in the hierarchy, the worthless people, the demo people are under the worthless people. And what we're going to see during this global reset is a significant rise in the demo people. Because during the global reset, you're going to have some people who are going to be doing really well. And you're going to have some people who are going to be, a lot of people, frankly, are going to be struggling. And this is going to create an energy of envy, disenchantment, disenfranchisement, and a lot of bad juju. Because this recently happened to me in the car rental business. Someone who had rented from me before, I did not know he was a demo person. I had a clue because, you know, we, we, we had a little dust up about some tires, but I actually made him pay for the tires. And he rented something and he rented a car, BMW. And the car actually tells you when it needs oil, a little symbol will pop up, we need oil, and it will tell you on the dash, the car needs oil. It will tell you in plain English. It will also tell you when the car needs coolant. It will show you a little symbol, low on coolant, and tell you in plain English it needs coolant. I didn't understand I was dealing with a demo person. This man ran the car into the ground. The car needed oil, did not add oil, just kept driving it, driving it, and driving it, and completely blew the engine. And this is what's so funny about this. After he blew the engine, because see, I didn't know until three days until once he turned it in exactly what happened. He tried to get another car. And for me, I have a policy. Like if you bring a car back to me wrecked or there, I don't know what's wrong. Like he brought the car back. It wouldn't start. Uh, I thought the battery was dead. I thought it was an easy fix. Little did I know. So 
my policy is if you bring a car to me, not in the condition that you rented it, I'm not going to give you another car until I figure out what happened. And that policy has served me well because this demo person literally ran the car into the ground. The car needed oil. And instead of adding oil, once again, I got another story about this. They will just keep driving it because see demo people don't care. Doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't care at all. Don't matter. They don't care, man. They don't care. And um, this car is a complete loss, complete loss. Um, because another thing with renting cars is when renters do things like this, insurance doesn't cover it. And I was just sitting there like, I was so pissed because like I just told you the story of my little radio that I was literally able to take around the world and nothing happened to it because I have a high, high conscientiousness trait. I take care of my stuff, right? But there were clues because he really wanted one of my cars and I get this message. Did I leave my gold teeth in the car? And I was sitting there like, you gotta be kidding me. And I go look in the car and there's some gold teeth in there. And I was like, yep, you did. So we arranged a time for him to pick up his gold teeth and I'm looking at him. And part of me was like, you should never rent another car to this guy. I did not listen to that little voice. Cause if I had listened to that little voice, I would not have a car that is completely ruined right now. And one of the things that I'm, I'm beginning to see is demo people have a high interest in BS stuff like um, demo people. They cannot stand to see something going well. They can't stand it. They, they just can't stand it. So demo people will like, let's say you, your life is going well. You just got a promotion on your job. You're doing well. This may be enough to trigger a demo person in your life to stop being your friend. They cannot stand to see things going well. And I have another demo person, another situation that I have got going on. I rented this girl a Range Rover and she got behind. So I deployed the GPS kill switch, I turned the vehicle off and I get this message from her. I should have knew what I was dealing with. It's like, Hey, I am stranded with my five week old baby and my nine year old son. Okay. All that information is just saying, me, 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 me. Not like, oh, the vehicle isn't working. I don't really need to hear about you, your son. I, what does, that's nothing to do with it. That's nothing to do with you paying me. That's nothing to do with it. But once again, this is the mindset of the demo person. And I was like, oh, that's too bad. I was like, where's the car? I knew where the car, well, at that point in time, I didn't know where the car, cause I was out and I wasn't near my GPS. So I didn't know where the car was. And I was like, okay, do this. Tell me where the car is. Leave the key in the door and I will come and get it. Another rule that I have when these, these situations happen is I don't check them out based on their word. Cause essentially a lot of people uh, will talk about check out. And once you check them out, then the insurance ends. Good thing I didn't check her out. So she tells me the car is at town center mall, not it's near this store, or this store, but it's at town center mall. First lie. So I go up to town center mall, drive around for an hour. can't find the car. Then she blocks me. Yes, she blocks me because every time I call her, it goes straight to voicemail. Then eventually I get to the point where I file a police report and I tell her I filed a police report. Then she tells me that she had the car towed 
to a tow yard. Now, she knew where she picked the car up. Anyone with any common sense would have had the car towed back to my office if they were gonna have it towed. That was a lie. I'm dealing with a twisted demo person. Uh, I feel that this car will never be recovered. And I wanna tell you why she did what she did. Even though she wasn't paying me, she wasn't paying me. She got offended that I turned the car off because she correctly assumed that I turned the car off. Now, why would you correctly assume that I turned the car off? Because you're not paying me. And see, th this, this is where the demo personality just takes over. I don't care if I have your car and I'm not paying you. How dare you turn it off? I need that car because it's all about me. It's all about me and what I want in my life. Fuck you. So what if you spent $20,000 for this car? I don't care. I need this car. You should leave it on and allow me to use this car and not pay you. So based on that fact that even though she wasn't paying me and she got offended, she did something with that Range Rover. She got rid of it. She literally got rid of it. And when you're dealing with demo people, it don't take much to offend them. Years and years ago, I used to work with this woman. I used to work at Scottish Rite and I used to work at the MOB, the medical office building. And there was this woman who I didn't, you know, it's so funny because, you know, I can look back in my life and see when I was dealing with demo people. But at the time, I didn't know what I was dealing with. I was dealing with this woman who was uh, the epitome of a demo person, just the epitome. And I saw her do this. This kid comes in, this family comes in and they just piss her off, right? You know what she does? She takes their medical record, their complete medical record and run it through the shredder. I'm just looking at her, I was like, what are you doing? And she's just like, fuck these people and walked off. She took their whole medical record and ran it to the shredder. I saw her and three other people saw her. And one of the other people who saw this was a supervisor who actually talked to her supervisor. And this is why she got fired because they came in and they pissed her off. She shredded their medical records. And I saw them going through the trash, fishing out the records because they had to reconstruct those medical records because the kid had cystic fibrosis, some other stuff. The kid was in the world of hurt. And I was just sitting there like, why would you do that? She was a demo person. Demo people don't care. If you offend a demo person, like we, we read about it and it's sad and it's unfortunate that when road rage goes bad, these are not normal people. When, if you're driving your car and you cut someone off and they become so enraged that they pull a gun out and shoot you for cutting them off, you're dealing with a demo person. Like typically when someone cuts me off, you know what my response is? Slow down, back up and get away from this person because this person is reckless and I don't like being around reckless people. So my first response is to get away from them, not to engage or, but anyone that would rev up on your, you know, unfortunately I've not had the misfortune to be dealing with a demo person in, real, in road trade. I've not had that, thank God. But you'll read about Someone got in a road trade incident and then someone pulled out a gun and shot somebody. This was a demo person. This was a demo person. And as we go through this global reset, we're going to see a dramatic rise in the number of demo people. 
These people are psychopaths. To a degree, they're psychopaths. They have no um, care or anything for anyone else. And what we're gonna see, once again, these demo people are below the worthless people. The worthless people. They're below the worthless people. If you're dealing with a demo person, let's say you're out with your wife and you're out to dinner and you're leaving the restaurant and you just run into someone, your shoulder hits their shoulder and you go, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. That ain't enough for a demo person. A demo person may try to kill you for something as simple, like, this happens to me all the time. Like I run this, oh, my bad, my bad, I'm sorry. We just keep it going. There is no reason for elevated conflict. But with a demo person, these fuses are very, very short. Demo people are always poised for conflict, destruction, and chaos. And as we go from the deleveraging from the stimulus economy back to the real economy. Because I don't know if I, I think I've mentioned it a few times, I've signed up for Instacart. And I use Instacart, because I, I hate going to the grocery store. So I use Instacart quite a bit. And I signed up for Instacart. And I signed up for Uber. And I signed up for DoorDash. I'm never going to do any Instacart, no Uber or DoorDash. I'm not going to do it. I just signed up because I'm in a geographically, you know, I saw a really interesting video where this girl made a point where you would make more money doing Instacart, DoorDash and stuff in the suburbs than you would in the city. And I downloaded these apps just to check the economy. And after seeing her video, because I'm telling you, um, when I log on to Instacart, I see nothing but trash. I see, I logged on, there was an order for 142 items and it only paid $8. How long is it going to take you to go to a grocery store and pull 140 some items? At least an hour. So that was an and then you got to drive and drop it off. And I was just sitting there like, that was just garbage. And uh, I'm saying, same thing with DoorDash. I'm just not seeing a lot. So to this young lady that put out this video that, you know, she may be right. Maybe if I was in the suburbs, I would see more. But right now I am just seeing trash orders. So I, I don't expect that to get better no time soon. And in this environment, we're going to see the rise of the demo people. So. You know, I'm not a really, I'm not a conflict oriented person. I don't, I don't start stuff. I don't mess with people. I don't roll, I don't roll rage. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. So in this environment, be careful who you engage with. Be careful who you deal with, because if you're dealing with a demo person, these people will take it from zero to a hundred, just like that because they're already orientated for conflict, drama, and other things. This is their disposition. They are predisposed for disruptive behavior and a sign of a demo person. Their house is going to be disorderly. Their car is going to be dirty. These people simply don't care. And what you're going to see because during the global reset and the breakdown, because personally, I think to become a demo person is a sign of mental illness. Because it is, like I said, these people are psychopaths. And what we're gonna see is a rise in the level of demo people. Once again, demo people are not to be confused with worthless people. Because see, a demo person, going back to my ex-wife, when this happened, she was a young girl. She was a demo person from birth. Worthless people can transition. Like, you know, your life's going pretty good and you're a normal contributing part of society. And then something bad happens. Next thing you know, you're a worthless person. 
you're full of envy because your life is going downhill and other people's lives are better. That's a transition. Demo people never transition. That's just the way that they are. They didn't transition into a worthless person. They started off from jump as a demo person and they will just uh, tear down whatever they can. Uh, they will just like, you know, YouTubers, there are YouTubers who are doing really well and a demo person will come and leave a crazy off base comment on their channel because how dare they be doing so well? How dare they be so successful? Mess that, bump that. I'm a, and they're gonna, they're gonna, because demo people can only destroy. They can't build. And they're destroying, tearing things down. That's their environment. And if they're in it rich in their environment, there will be chaos, destruction, devastation. So, God forbid if you, because, you know, I look back at my marriage and they're, they're, it's so clear now. But when I was engaged, I didn't understand. I couldn't see it. I didn't have the skill sets. I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the knowledge base to know what I was dealing with. Like to, today, if I ran into her and we were dating, I, it would be one, one date and I'd be out because I would know exactly what I was dealing with. But at the time, I didn't give you a perfect example. One night we had a fight and I never hit my wife or put my hands on her. I never did that. And she said, I should have you arrested for hitting me. And I was like, I didn't hit you. I'm gonna call 911. Me being a smart ass, I handle her the phone. She calls 911 and the police come. Fortunately for me, the, the cops were seasoned and they could knew it because you know at the time I was working out really hard. I was really diesel at the point, and there was no I didn't hit her. And the cops believed me. And he's like, man, frankly, I don't think he touched you. Because they were looking at me. Because if I had hit her the way that I was built at the time, I would have left some marks and some damage. So, you know, she left, but that was the sign of a demo person. Everything's going fine. We can't have that. <laughs> we, we can't have that. We, we can't have that. No, 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 no. I got to throw a monkey wrench into the plan. And what I did not know until many, many years later is she told her family and my family that I hit her and it came out years and years later that I didn't. So this is the stuff of demo people. And if you're dealing with a demo person, my advice to you is to get away from them as quick as you can, because they're not happy unless destruction is happening. They're not happy. Like this guy who uh, ruined my car, he's 100% a demo person. 100% because I looked him up on social media. I saw all kinds of stuff and I was like, oh my God. And th this, this is one of the things with in the car rental business. You hope that someone would rent your car, drive it and bring it back in the same condition that they rented it in. When you're dealing with a demo person, that ain't gonna happen. A demo person is going to do something and I, I think I've had a few cars like this guy, the girl in the Range Rover, they were demo people. See, demo people are so far from respectable people. Once again, demo people are born that way. You can transition into a worthless person, but as a demo person, the signs of you being a demo person, uh, being this unordered, like one, one of the things that I realized, because I'm kind of a neat freak and my ex-wife was kind of filthy. And that was something we used to get into it about because it's like, can you just clean up after yourself, right? Because I didn't leave any messes and that's a, that's a sign. That is a big sign when you're dealing with someone who is disorderly when you're dealing with someone who is unclean and unorganized, 
just know you could be dealing with a demo person. Not every sloppy, nasty person is a demo person, but that is a sign. Uh, I look at the number of cars I get back that are completely filthy. I get cars back. You can't even tell someone drove them. I remember this one guy, he rented the, the BMW. He brought it back on a full tank of gas. The car was washed. The wheels were armor all. I can easily rent that car out in the condition that they brought it back in. That ain't normal. <laughs> that ain't normal. That, that's, that's a pretty rare situation. And I have like play a player. You know, if you could check out the uh, playlist of the Kill Switch Chronicles, play a player was a demo person. And this is why I'm saying the rise of the demo people. They're, they're literally everywhere because a demo person doesn't operate by social standards. Like most people, if you are nice to the average person, the average person is nice back to you. Not, not with demo people. No, 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 no. You could be nice to them and they can become hostile to you. They can become evil. They can cuss you out for saying, hey, have a, have a good day. These people are not right to begin with. They're not. And during this social shift in the global reset and the shift of a lot of people moving down, this is going to force the production of more demo people. And I mean, like I've had my share of dealing with demo people throughout my life. And it's always been an unpleasant experience. It's never pleasant. It is never a good experience. It's always something bad, funky or crazy. So during this global reset, we're going to see the rise of the demo people in the demo demolition. I call them demo people because they're all about tearing down stuff, creating disharmony, creating friction, creating conflict. I guarantee you, if you look at all of the psychiatric profiles of all of the road rage people that shot someone, I guarantee you, if you were to go to their house, it would be dirty. I guarantee you, if you look at the car, it would be filthy. There's just these signs that you see over and over and over and over again. So if you're dealing with someone who's a demo person, because these people have no conflict resolution skills, not low conflict resolution skills, they have no conflict resolution skills because they want conflict. And um, I think I was dealing with a demo person on the Porsche because he was renting it. And he, first of all, he ran over something. When, the, when I got back, there was a hole in the front of the tire. Tires don't just get holes in the front of the tire without you really running over something very, very hard. And he was full of conflict. It got stupid. He's like, you need to come get your car out of my driveway. I'm like, dude. And I'm just sitting there like, if there's something wrong with my car or if it's damaged, I will have you arrested. Because at that point I was like, because, you know, I was trying to get him to accept responsibility because I knew that he ran over something. When I got the vehicle back, I saw the tire. It was evident that he ran over something. Whole time, it was like, it's a bad tire. And these tires were new. I had bought them two months prior before renting to them. So I knew that it, they weren't bad tires. And when you're dealing with demo people, logic, fairness go, goes out goes out the window, goes out the window. It is not um, part of their makeup. It's not part of who they are. It's not part of their orientation. So if you're running into a demo person and you're like, this is weird, understand that being nice and logical, you're wasting your time. It doesn't matter to these people. They don't care. They just simply don't care. 
like like a, once again my belief is that most demo people are psychopaths and there there's something mentally wrong with them and during this big big push here that we're having we're going to see an explosion of demo people just like we're seeing the rise of the worthless people because hard times force people it forces what's in you out of you um, typically there are some people hard times if it pulls out the best of them this case is going to pull out the worst of these people of the worthless people of the demo people and like this guy and this one doing this video today he called me he said, he said i know that you don't have no more cars for rent and i was like i'm not i i was just like I ignored it i did i was like no 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 i am not renting any cars to you you have you know and also to have a conversation with a demo person if i called him up and said look man what'd you do with the car it would have been pointless because he was just gonna lie i ain't do nothing in the car it's, it's, it's just pointless like i had my moment where i was furious that he just blew up the engine of this car i was like okay where's that gonna get you oh you could just be mad the car's still gonna be messed up he ain't gonna pay for it because he don't have no money and th this is one of the the really irritating things about the car rental business is you know you, you try to screen them you'll get someone who'll do something and they have no money they have no money and part of the reason that they're having no money is a demo person is it's very hard for these people to be stable. Uh, all of the demo people that I've run into in my life, none of them were stable. None of them were stable. And this guy sent me some message talking about he was being evicted and uh, he needed to get a car where he can do some Uber and I'm just sitting there like, can't help you, buddy. Can't help you, because I was just sitting back. Everything I got is rented out. Sorry, sorry to hear about your troubles. And just left it alone. Because here, here's the thing is, demo people are attracted to stable people. They're attracted to you because they hate what you are, they despise you, and what they want to do is infiltrate your life so they can create some devastation and destruction because like once again uh, my policy is when i am dealing with a demo person and i know i'm dealing with, is to remove myself from the situation as soon as possible because these people have no conflict resolution skills they're looking to start a fight they're looking to start a fight they're looking to start something they're that's what they're looking to do and it ain't gonna get no better. They're gonna keep doing these things. And I feel in the next five, seven years, we're gonna see a rise in violent crimes because of these demo people. Once again, these people are born this way. They did not transition. They didn't have a hard situation. They didn't go postal. They were born this way. And if you look in their lives, you will see devastation, conflict. You will see all like, like I said, man, and this dude, he, he, I think he stopped messaging me because I stopped looking, but because he messaged me a few times, I'm like, dude, get away from me. Just, just get away from me because you ain't nothing but trouble. And I don't like trouble. I like my life to be calm and orderly, which is the antithesis of what demo people love. They love conflict. They love disharmony. They love disorder. They, they love devastation. They love to see stuff. Like I guarantee you when my car was melting down and this, he was probably smiling because he knew that he was destroying this car. I'm a I'm hundred percent serious. He was probably happy that he knew because he, because essentially the sound that the car was making wasn't the normal sound. Because normally, if you know anything about BMWs, there's a purr, there's a hum. This car didn't do this. It was like, and it was shut off. Literally, you would start it up. 
because we put a new battery in it, put a new start on it. And he did a number on that car. This was intentional damage. This wasn't accidental because typically, if you know anything about BMWs, you know, you can run on low oil, low oil for a hot minute and not mess up the car. And you can run with low coolant for a hot minute. So this person knew that the car was needing oil and coolant and he drove it hard on purpose to accelerate the devastation. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but this is what we're dealing with. So let me know your thoughts and opinions of the demo people. Have you encountered a demo person? Have you encountered any of these personalities? Because I have. And now when I see them, I know who they are and I treat them accordingly, which is to get away from them, <laughs> to get them out of my life as quick as possible. All right, so this is some stuff I've got going on. Uh, this video is gonna drop. Uh, I got a program called Your First Company because uh, it will teach you how to set up your first company. There'll be a link below. And they're also in the same comment, I'm gonna link to get my free audio book so you can get on the wait list for the credit repair. Cause we got a lot of stuff that's gonna happen in 2022 and I'll, I'll write down there what's going on and let you guys know. So that link will be below. Cause uh, essentially I feel that credit repair is gonna be a growth industry because of what I know going on with the global reset and the economy melting down. And I feel that we're gonna be in a recession in 2023. That's just how I look at it. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Check out the link. It'll be in the first comment and I will talk to you guys in the next one.